All right, gentlemen, buy once, cry once. These are Walmart snowshoes that I picked up just before coming out here and they just keep sliding off. So this armed expedition was supposed to be uh, my first time operating in snowshoes. However, I made the mistake of buying Walmart brand snowshoes. Now you can guess how well that went. You know, I should have known better, right? Because there's a lot of gear that you can get away with buying cheap. And there's a lot of gear that you can't get away with buying cheap. I'll give you guys an idea of how much snow there is out here. This is my knee. I'm 6'5". <laughs> and this thing is friggin' deep. So yeah, quite a bit of snow here. So, and uh, because of my lack of snowshoes, I'm going to have to stick to these trails, which have already been trodden down. Howdy, this is Studio Schizo Saint here. Uh, the audio for this portion of the video cut out, so here I am. I decided to do a gear check because my Discord has been bullying me for, <laughs> for weeks about the fact that I don't even do gear checks in my videos. So I'm going to go over every single piece of gear that I brought with me on this beautiful expedition. As you can see, I brought my trusty, if not completely autistic, AR-15, which deserves its own standalone video. It's actually doing really well, and the optic on top, as far as I can tell, has survived these insane conditions. So pretty happy about that. I am also using these. These are the Pig Cold Weather Gloves by SKD. Now, they're not perfect at keeping my hands warm. However, they're keeping them more than warm enough for me to operate the rifle comfortably in, again, zero degree weather. So that's pretty nice. This is a bone that I found on my Autumn Summit armed expedition. And uh, ever since it's been in my house, my wife has said that she's been hearing voices and seeing ghosts in the corner of our bedroom. So yeah, we're just going to get rid of that. I don't know what that's a bone to, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. This is the 511, I think it's the Rush 32 backpack. It's got this really cool concealed carry pocket, which as you can see, I'm using to carry my tripod and my Coleman knife that I found at a pawn shop for $5 one time. This is a tourniquet holder from American Rescue, and it's holding a old tourniquet that needs to be replaced. However, again, my Discord uh, bullied me into actually staging it, so that's kind of nice. I got this with the uh, Commando Store Gumball uh, thing. It's basically kind of like a gear lottery. I recommend you do it because I got, I think, $70 worth of gear. Uh, that's including a $15 gift card. I got three of the gumballs and I did pretty well. I'll show you what else I got in just a second here. Now I've shown you my gloves. I can put them back on. I'm going to be honest, pretty drippy. Look pretty good. My top pockets of my rush bag here. I've got my uh, car keys and in there is a uh, Christian healing olive oil. Uh, I think some religions use that. The Orthodox Church does it. My denomination, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we use healing oil as well. Uh, of course, we also believe in using normal medicine. We're not crazy. Uh, in here, I've got my stove and I've got a few lighters in there. Listen, I see a lot of people out there with like flint and steel. Um, listen, that's cute. That's good. I'm not even saying it's bad that you carry that. This is really light and it costs $1 at a gas station. And uh, you can just get like eight of these and throw them in your bag. So um, not sure why more people don't do that. But hey, whatever, you know, <laughs> that's just me. Here in the main compartment. Oh. By the way, that's something I really love about this backpack. It's only got like four pockets, which is so good. I'm, I hate bags with like 80 different pockets. It sucks. I hate them. Uh, in here, I've got this, which we're going to be cooking here in a minute. This is not a uh, mountain house. This is peak refuel. I've seen a few guys on like YouTube and Instagram using these. We'll see if it's any good. It's beef stroganoff, which I've heard is one of the best freeze-dried milled flavors. So we'll try that in just a minute here, boys. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, cold weather test that real quick. I've got my hearing protection, which so far I have not been able to get to turn on in this weather, which is hilarious. This is a bottle of water I put in here about a week ago. And uh, yeah, that's um, that's a uh, frozen solid here. This, this is the other thing I got from Commando Store. This is what's called a whoopee. And I do believe it is genuine mill syrup. Um, this was going for like 40 or 50 bucks on Commando Store's website when I checked. It's uh, basically just kind of like a multi-purpose tarp blanket thing. Um, pretty cool. I really like it. I uh, haven't really tested it yet, but in my own home, like when I was cold the other night, I was using it and uh, does a pretty good job. So, you know, it's uh, not too bad. Go ahead and stuff that back. 
everything. And uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll be more organized in a minute. This oh, frick, is a thing of propane for my stove. I have no experience in how long these things actually last. Like, I don't know how many uses I get out of these. That is something I will have to learn from experience. And by the way, I would encourage you to do the same thing. I also have a basic uh, first aid kit. I've actually used this one before. I used it for a few years, so I had to replace it. So it's nice because I know exactly where everything is and what exactly is in here. In here, I've got some, you know, freaking granola bars or whatever. Nothing too crazy there. My front compartment here, I've got my mechanics gloves that I forgot to take out. There's definitely more of a warm weather and fall glove. I have uh, some fingers cut off so I can make it, so I can operate my Glock with it. Um, yeah, definitely not a good cold weather glove. However, during the summer, spring, and fall, these are actually pretty good. On here, I've got a fork, which is wonderful. Now, I'm an idiot and forgot to bring my pot, so I'm going to have to go back and get that in just a minute here. I've got paracord, which uh, I have actually used quite a bit for different things. In here, I've got a cheap Walmart flashlight. Um, obviously, you're not going to see it work in this weather. It's got a ton of spill. It's got a ton of spill. It's actually pretty impressive how much spill it has, but it doesn't have a lot of throw. But, you know, buying a cheap Walmart flashlight for your bag, definitely nothing, definitely not a bad idea. In here, I've got a right rain. The, the pen's in there as well. And in there, I have a Book of Mormon. I need to get a mini Bible to throw in my bag as well. Um, back here, I've got these. I bought these forever ago. These are Nikon Trailblazer binoculars. Now, I don't think these use traditional like scope technology. I'm pretty sure these are technically prism optics. The eye box on these is really small. It's actually really hard for me to get both eyes focused with these. However, they are compact. Um, I forget the magnification on these suckers. I think it's 25X. So anyway, it's kind of fun having that. When I was out in the desert, these things were very useful because I could just see all the way across the valley from on top of the mountains I'd be on. And um, I'm going to do that later. But <laughs> yeah, these things were actually pretty dope. So uh, basically, that's everything I've got with, with me in this bag. This is my basic day hike bag. I've taken this thing on countless trips. Um, every time I go through the airport with this thing, I end up uh, getting caught by TSA. I guess they don't like uh, molly webbing or whatever. But anyway, there's my gear check. I'm going to get my rifle out of the snow. This trail that I've been taking is blocked by these two trees, which for manlets would be no problem. But for me, I have to frickin' duck and run so the snow doesn't fall down my frickin' back. Let's talk about what capabilities you should focus on getting. Let's say, for example, you live in an environment like mine. You live in the northern half of the United States. Getting some uh, pig gloves from SKD, that's a great idea because it allows you to operate AR-15s. It allows you to operate your pistols. It allows you to operate your weapons and not to mention mingle and mess with the rest of your gear while in freezing conditions, which is an enormous advantage. That is a great advantage. Obviously you can get gloves that are far cheaper than this that will keep your hands warm, but you probably can't operate your AR-15. You probably can't dig around your backpack. You probably can't do all the things that you might need to do with those gloves. So this gives me capability. Now, in order to be skillful with these, I'm going to have to keep coming out here. I'm going to have to keep doing these repeated actions. Another example of a capability that I think everyone should look into, regardless of what environment you live in, is getting a little stove and propane. It costs less than 20 bucks to get both of those things. I got a cheap Chinese stove on Amazon. So far, it's been working awesome. It costs 10 bucks. I got a thing of propane at Walmart for like six or $7. And think about it, <laughs> for less than $20, you can have fire effectively anywhere you want. You can boil water anywhere you want. You can extend the range at which you can operate significantly for just $20 and it doesn't even weigh that much. That's a no brainer capability that you should all get. Now the skill is figuring out how to do it in a time efficient manner, how to not waste propane. That is something you learn to do over time. Another thing, if you live in, again, cold weather environments like this, having snowshoes that work <laughs> would be great. Obviously, that is a capability I do not have right now. Um, and then once I get good snowshoes, that is a skill I'm going to have to learn over time. So what I would encourage all of my viewers, anyone who takes this kind of stuff even a little seriously, what I recommend you do 
is go ahead and make a list of capabilities you want. Are you able to make fire outside? Do you have a sleeping bag? Do you have a tent? Do you have an AR-15? Do, do you have a good optic on that AR? Make a list of gear and capabilities that you would want. Let me give you one more example of a capability. This Vortex 5X, which I think, <laughs> I promise I'm not a shill. I don't work for Vortex or anything, but this is an enormous amount of capability. This is a red dot sized 5X scope. That is a big deal. Being able to see 5X, that's a big advantage. I'm able to identify targets. I'm able to scout out, you know, what's going on over there. I'm able to <laughs> take shots at longer ranges. Now, actually being able to make hits accurately with this optic, that is a skill. So what I would encourage all of you to do, go ahead, get a notepad either on your phone or, or somewhere else and make a list of capabilities that you do not have that you would like. For example, night vision is probably on a lot of your guys' list. I know it's on mine. Uh, being able to sleep outside in cold conditions, right? That would mean getting a good sleeping bag, some kind of a pillow maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I need to do more research on that. For example, are you able to defend yourself with a lethal weapon? Now, I know a lot of my viewers are actually from Europe, which I think is great. Um, look up your local laws. Are you able to legally own muzzle loaders? I know a lot of countries that don't allow, you know, maybe, <laughs> um, I forget the type of powder. They don't, they don't allow normal cartridge weapons, but maybe you can get a black powder weapon. Now, is a black powder weapon incredibly out of date? Yes, but if you're in Europe and the apocalypse happens and you have a musket and everyone else has knives, you win. That's what we know from history. So, you know, and then obtain that musket, learn how to shoot it effectively, maybe get a bayonet. I mean, maybe due to the local laws, you're gonna be LARPing as some kind of a Napoleonic soldier. <laughs> you know, I don't know, I'm just spitballing. The reason why this topic has been glued to my mind is because I think in this community, there's a tendency to just want to acquire more guns. Now, please do not misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with owning a ton of weapons, but is it better to own 10 guns or three guns and night vision, having an MO stockpile, having a good backpack? Do you see what I'm saying? So before you go out and build another Anderson AR-15, that's gonna cost four to 500 bucks, think what would four to 500 bucks get me? That's the price of a decent optic. That's the price of a good backpack setup. That's the price of an incredible tent. That's the price of a decent tent and a backpack and a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad. That is the price of all sorts of other things. You see what I'm saying here? That's the price of an incredible food storage. Can you imagine if you spent $500 on food storage? Just be careful with your money, guys. We're in a recession right now. It's probably only gonna get a lot worse. So make sure you're spending your money where it counts. Okay, guys, we're gonna do something big funny. The snow here is insanely deep and you'll notice, oh man, the muzzle of my AR-15, it's loaded with snow. The good news is my weapon is loaded with green tip and I'm currently trying to phase out all the green tip and all the hollow points in my <laughs> personal inventory. I only wanna have M193 just cause that's what my scope is uh, calibrated to. So I'm gonna point this weapon at this tree and put it uh, super deep underground just to see what happens. Let's see what happens when you discharge an AR underground. <laughs> I'm gonna need to file a tax stamp. I accidentally made a silencer. It's called the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. So I checked the chamber. Um, unfortunately, guys, I apologize. I was not able to get that on camera, but it did cycle the next round. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just dump what's left of this mag. I think there's about 18, 19 more rounds left. So. Let's just go ahead and uh, see what happens here. <laughs> oh yeah, so hearing safe. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> that is so freaking cool, dude. <laughs> oh shoot, did I start a fire? Um, let's just uh, do that. <laughs> that was a blast. That's for my male audience out there. See, this is exactly what I mean by capability. I'm able to melt with this pot, that stove, and that propane. I'm able to make water 
wherever I go, in the, especially in the wintertime. So I just think that is so great. I'll tell you right now, gentlemen, that smells incredible. It smells really good. All right, we're gonna end the day with the uh, analysis on the peak beef stroganoff. That is inarguably fire. That is really good. That is freaking excellent. So let's look at the ranking now. We got the beef stroganoff by peak one, the mountain house scrambled egg breakfast thing, skip breakfast skillet, and the mountain house mac and cheese. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Hope this video was pretty entertaining. I'm glad we could talk about some stuff. I would love for you guys to leave a comment. Please let me know. Do you think I'm insane? Do you think I'm crazy? What gear should I prioritize next other than, you know, snowshoes? Take it easy and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Look forward to talking to you guys again soon.